Hello and welcome to another episode of the Found in Christ podcast. Yay! Today I have another very amazing guest. Her name is Shanti. Hi, Shanti. Hello. Thank, Thank you for so having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for making time to be here. And um, if you guys don't know who Shanti is, she's actually a very incredible woman. She just won Miss Amazing Malaysia Gold Place, and Miss Amazing Malaysia is actually a pageant. For differently abled individuals um, to showcase, you know, not just outer beauty but inner beauty, um, and yeah. you know, you guys can see she's beautiful inside and out. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, um, Shanti, why don't I pass the floor to you to do some introduction first? All right. Thanks, Ashira. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Shanti. Um, so, like you have introduced me, I just want Miss Amazing Malaysia. Yes. It's, a, it's a platform to for people with different abilities physically and also intellectually mm -hmm. and uh, other than that I'm by profession I'm a doctor and I'm currently a full-time student I'm doing my uh, PhD level studies wow so, yeah yeah guys beauty and brains right here <laughs> so yeah um, today we actually want to focus on uh, your testimony Shanti mm -hmm. and I know that you were from an unbelieving background mm -hmm. and then you came to know Jesus mm -hmm. so I really hope that your uh, testimony will encourage those who are out there who are maybe on the fence or know any family members or friends that are in um, you know in between or deciding whether or not to follow Jesus and we really Really pray that this encourages you and brings hope in the midst of darkness so yeah passing the floor to you Shanti why don't you you start by you know sharing your story thank you well my story of finding Christ was, is actually a long story it wasn't mm -hmm. anything dramatic that changed overnight or that it was mm -hmm. a very slow and long journey which took years actually well wow. so I came from a family of, of uh, Hindus like we mm -hmm. we we were not believers, yeah. right? So the first time I heard of the gospel was in 2015. So mm -hmm. before that, I I knew there's something called Christianity. No idea what it's all about. Wow. But the first time I've heard of, of the gospel was 2015. And that was when I was like, hmm, okay, interesting. Nice, yeah. nice story. But nothing actually really moved or touched me. Mm -hmm. I did start going uh, to church, attending church, listening to the messages. It's just... And for me at that time, it just um, it made space for curiosity. Wow! And me being a person who was more logical than following mm -hmm. uh, my heart, yeah, I had a lot of curiosity. I had a lot of questions. Yeah, I mean, you're a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I needed things. Um, I needed to have my questions answered. Yeah. So and. A little bit by little bit, slowly in the years, like, you know, I've had struggles and um, things were difficult at the workplace and mm -hmm. all of that. I was feeling very discouraged, yeah. very down. And one day, uh, uh, I came across a verse uh, on social media. Actually, mm -hmm. It was from Matthew 11, you know, come to me with those who are weary and burdened and, yeah. and I will give you rest. And that actually really spoke to me. That mm -hmm. stood out That because that's what I needed. Wow. I was burdened. I was and I wanted rest. Yeah. So that brought about more curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I started searching. So my heart was yeah. searching at the time. Yeah. Was that your first like kind of like encounter with God? Like when you I saw this verse? Yes, yes. I would say so. I would say so. Because before that, uh, yes, I would attend church. I would listen to the message. I would be encouraged. But nothing really came up to me, like spoke to me and be like, whoa, this is for me. Yeah. So that verse at that time, at that moment, really felt like it was for me. And it's true, like social media. So was it like Absolutely. someone just sharing the verse on an Insta story? Or? Yes, it was. Oh, wow. Really, it was actually just a post and just a verse. So I'm like, maybe I should read more. Maybe I should find out more. Wow. So, and because of that curiosity that, that, that needed to be answered, right? Mm -hmm. And before I went to the Bible to look at God's word more, yeah. I needed to know that it was legit. Yeah. So I'm like, because um, every faith would say that, you know, what they believe yeah. is true and their God is the true God. And I wanted to know, like, can I trust the Bible? That yeah. was my question. Like, but is this Jesus, the, like, legit? Exactly. Or is it just is like... Is it a fairy tale story? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Is it just a nice story and all that? I needed, I needed to know. So mm -hmm. that was a curious. It didn't come from a place of... Um, cynicism or all yeah. of that it was actually a genuine 
curiosity. Yeah. Like before, because I've had pastors saying, we just mm-hmm. look at the Bible, it says this, this, this. But my foundational question was, can I trust the Bible? Mm-hmm. How do I trust the Bible? So I started looking up. Yeah. And I started um, listening and reading on more apologetics and all that, little, studying the history of the Bible. Yeah. How was it written? How was it translated? Wow. Where the manuscripts are kept? How was it compiled? What a doctor <laughs> thing to do, like looking at the manuscripts, how, <laughs> how did it come together, the history of the Bible. Yes, like such a nerd, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was what I did. And, um, and through that, like it was fascinating, right? Yeah. Studying the, the history of how we have the Bible that we have today. Yeah. And why are there so many translations? How was that done? And I started to believe, because this, this is people's recollections of what happened and it's mm-hmm. not coming from just from one person it's coming from so many and all, yeah. all 66 books of the bible all pointed to the same jesus christ at yeah. the end. and so it took a while but that's when i believe that huh all right the bible is legit and i can trust it mm-hmm. and so i had a new testament bible with me at home okay. someone gave it to me i wow. I never read it i just kept it yeah so maybe someday but i never touched it but after all of that after feeling that I feel like I can trust the words that are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's when I actually started to open the New Testament and I went through it. And the more more I read, the more I was immersed by it. And, you know, things just what I was highlighting, I was reading and I was... It was the Holy Spirit right there. (laughs) Absolutely. So it was like studying. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I felt enlightened and I felt so filled. Mm -hmm by doing that. It was a daily thing. It was a yeah. daily thing to me. And, and wow. I did that. I completed uh, the New Testament. I went through it again. Yeah. And things popped out that didn't pop out before. But did you consider yourself like a Christian at that point of time? Because it was more of like doing research and studying yes. it. Yes. That one, it started with a studying yeah. and all of that. But it wasn't, it wasn't, I did not consider myself a Christian yet Okay. at the time. It was... Even through reading the Bible? Even through reading the Bible, I was touched. I was touched. But actually, the, the moment when I actually felt like, all right, Lord, I, wanna, I want you as my Savior. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I want you as my Savior. That came through one of a, a, one, one powerful testimony that I heard actually on YouTube. Oh, wow. A powerful testimony also coming from a person who was a non-believer, coming mm-hmm. from a person from a different faith and how... The, how God has worked in his life and wow. that testimony actually really really touched me brought me to tears and that was when I'm like Lord I want you as my Savior wow so like yeah. through YouTube you actually gave your life to yeah. Jesus yes so after absolutely. watching that testimony you were just like Lord I want you yeah wow absolutely. that's so incredible I think that really shows like the power of like one um, God God is so real like he's so specific where he really comes and meets you specifically as a doctor he knows like how intellectual you are he knows how much you you look for the evidences of things and looks look to like the history mm. the compilation of the biblical books and everything in order to believe and God meets you there mm. God you know I'm sure God was in the midst of all that as you were doing your research you know he was I'm sure he was guiding you to the the right yeah. places to search Absolutely. to the right things to look for Absolutely. and you know like softening your heart in that process i think that shows how specific our god is and incredible he is like he goes he leaves the 91 to go after the one yeah. he knows every single one of us to detail and it, it's not just numbers it's not you are not just like one of the seven billion people in the world that he doesn't care about you know he cares about every single one of us he knows each of our hearts mm. he knows what each of us are struggling individually mm. like even when you were a tired you know doctor where you were so burdened you were so worn out and you know you saw that verse like come to me who all you who are weary and burdened and yeah. i will give you rest yeah. and i think that none of that is a coincidence you yeah. know god was literally trying to get your attention yep. and in the way that he knows would get your attention. Yes, yes. Wow, that's so Absolutely. incredible. You're right. Like, like I, I really agree when you say that God is so specific. Like each encounter, if we speak to people of how they've encountered yeah. God, like each encounter is so unique yeah. and, so, and so different. And so it's like it's specially designed to touch your heart. Yeah. Like each encounter. Like for me, I'm like God knows me. I I'm an, like you said, I'm a, I'm an intellectual person. I need my questions yeah. answered before I can start opening my heart to yeah. trust. Or else because I've had people who come to me and be like, you know, just trust God. Mm-hmm. 
But I'm like, how do I know it's true? Yeah. So I, I, I needed that background. I needed that work, the, the whole studying about the history before I can actually start opening my heart yeah. and letting his word touch me and letting uh, sermons and, and testimonies of people actually touch me. In yeah. my heart. Because otherwise, without having those questions answered, I had this this wall in yeah. front of me. Yeah, so that was how it was. That's so me. incredible. But like, you know, how did you um, actually find the difference between like, because you were from a different faith, you mm. know, but what made you actually like, want to decide that this is the, the, the faith for me now, Jesus is the way for me now, rather than like these other gods that people claim to, to be the actual gods? Mm. Because actually for me, personally, I have, like even I, when I came from a different um, faith background, yeah. it wasn't, um, I wasn't like, you know, actively pursuing my faith or mm-hmm. anything. It's like, well, it's something that you needed to, um, say it wasn't something that I, I believed so deeply in my mm-hmm. heart and at that time uh, of struggle it's I know that my heart was searching yeah my my brain had questions my heart was searching yeah so I got the questions answered and my heart actually for the first time actually felt touched wow and so knowing how I knew that okay this is for me like Jesus Jesus is for me is yeah. because my questions were answered yeah my doubts my doubts were answered. Yeah. Right. My doubts were removed, and also my heart was touched, and the peace, yeah. and the comfort yeah. that I have gotten just wow. through His words, wow. like how they were, like how the words were speaking personally to me. That was something I couldn't. There was no other explanation for yeah. that other than this is really you. God, yeah. Right? And and that's because um in the Bible it says like. Jesus is the living word. Like, yes. so Jesus was encountering you as you were reading him because yeah. he is the word in flesh. So the, yes. he is the Bible in flesh. So yeah. you were actually encountering this living God and that's why it, it came so alive to you. And I, I think I'm not going to be a, a, ashamed to say this as well, that I, I believe that only our God is living. Mm. Every other God is an idol. Every other God is, you know, not alive. Yeah. And only our God is living and, and you... Um, had an encounter with the living God mm. and that is why it was something so different that like you never encountered before mm. that touched your heart. Yeah. 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 So that like I said, that peace and that comfort that comes and you and you go like you sit down in your room alone and you go like wow. Wow. Whoa, what is this? And you know that it's not coming from another person mm-hmm. or just a nice word of comfort and all mm-hmm. that. It's deep. That, yeah. That the way it touches the way it touches you, that's deep. And there's no other explanation other than, well, God is living and God is alive and He speaks to you through His Word. Wow. And, you know, like you said, like things, even social media on YouTube and all of that, yeah. God can use every single thing wow. to touch you. It does not necessarily have to be at church. I wasn't at church when mm-hmm. I was touched. I was at home in the comfort of my own home looking at my phone. Yeah. So, yes, anywhere you are, if God can encounter you and God can reach you yeah. in a way that you need to be reached. Yeah. And that's, I think that's so beautiful and that's so amazing. It, it mm-hmm. never fails to blow my mind. Wow, I'm, I am so mind blown. And, and I believe that that is also a line of the word of God when it says like, you, you will seek me and you'll, fi- you'll find me when yeah. you seek me with all your heart. Yeah. And you were seeking him and that's why he encountered you. And I, I believe that sometimes, um, you know, people, people need to, I, I guess like, seek God, you know, seek his heart. Mm. And and because he says that when you draw near to him, he will draw near to yeah, you. Yeah. So it's not that, you know, I feel like sometimes people say they feel distant from God mm. and they feel like God's not listening or God's mm. not there. But it's it's not that God's not there or God's mm. not listening. Mm. I mean, God has been there with you every single day of your life, like even since you were in your mother's womb. Yeah, but it was only when you actually started pursuing him, then you realized that he was there all along, mm. right? It's like the the veil being removed. Wow. Like, you know, God is there and He has been there all along. Mm-hmm. So when there are times, not to say that I don't struggle with this, I do too. Yeah. You feel like, hey, God, you're, you, you feel distant from me. Mm-hmm. It's not that God stepped away from you. He yeah. doesn't do that. He's yeah. with you and He's inside you. You know, He's, he's there. He's, yeah. he's omnipresent, right? And what happens when we feel the distance is that we have the veil over us, mm-hmm. maybe something that's distracting us and all that. Are we yeah. So when we are intentional in actually seeking and intentional in 
being close to God, and that's when you're like, I'm right here. Yeah. And that's when the veil is removed, and you see that, oh wow, you're here all along. So yeah, yeah that was huge. That me. is so beautiful. That's so incredible. And like, I want to know, you know, when you first, um, you know, like you you were going through this whole journey of searching for answers, and then finally, like you gave your life to Jesus. But what happened after that? You know, how did mm. you grow? How did you struggle? What was it like? Good question. <laughs> So after that, okay, well, it it was a journey, and then um, after a while, there were you know you let life sometimes just take you, and you know you just go with the flow and all of that. Mm-hmm. And what happens is that drive of of searching and seeking yeah. started to diminish in a way, mm-hmm. like for myself. Okay, and then you had so many things happening in life. Yeah, that you know. Me for myself, I admit it. Like my focus was off. Yeah. Right. We had the pandemic happening, mm-hmm. and then I was struggling through sickness. Yeah. And then I went through like the past few years. Mm-hmm. The past two three years was like the most painful years of my life. Yeah. And and that that was a time when I actually felt like, oh my goodness, I I feel far away mm-hmm. from God. Not because I've strayed in any way, but That yeah. I felt that distance, and I felt alone mm. in the midst of in the midst of those struggle. I felt alone, mm-hmm. and that was also the time when you, I felt like I have lost everything. I mm-hmm. had everything worldly at yeah. least, right? Like my my physical ability at the time, and then my yeah. career, my the life that I have built, the things that I've believed yeah. that that I had, the security that I had in my life, everything was stripped away. Stripped away. I wow. felt like the rug was just. Pulled from from the bottom of my feet, and mm-hmm. I was just left to fend for myself. Yeah, and I have never felt more alone than I had during those seasons. And um, as I prayed, and as I prayed, I felt like I was reminded that God said, "I'm still right here. Mm-hmm. I'm right here." Wow. And my Bible was there. I opened and I opened it, and I started reading it again yeah. because I haven't done it for a while. You Aww. know. And I started reading it again, and that was the moment where I felt I felt like the only thing I could do then was to rely completely on God because wow. I could not rely on anything or anyone mm-hmm. at the time. The mm-hmm. the the people, the person who was supposed to be there for me was not, yeah. and I could not rely on myself. And I'm like, Lord, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. I I can't do this. And so that was when complete surrender happened. And God has a beautiful way of of orchestrating things in your life. Like mm-hmm. that, like I said, I felt the most alone at the time. But that was also when He reconnected me to people I, that I've lost contact with, mm-hmm. and also reconnected me to people that I've kept in touch with but I never met. You well. know, and and somehow or other things were arranged in such a way that I found a church community. Yeah. And I knew in my heart that I wanted to go to church but because at that time physically I was not able to yeah. I was not able to I was I was very reliant and and dependent on somebody else to help me and yeah. if there's no one to help me I couldn't I was just stuck at home. Yeah, right? and and we'll get more into this in the yes. following episode. Yeah. Um, just to give some context, um, because Shanti had a struggle with a really terrible illness, uh, which she's still struggling with. You can't tell now because, um, like <laughs> because of God, <laughs> because of God. But she actually has a struggle with that illness, and we'll get more into that um in the following episode. Mm. But yeah, Shanti, please continue. So um, yeah, and through through that struggle um. The way God has orchestrated who came into my life and the people who spoke life into me, the mm-hmm. people who held my hand and cried with me, that all in all, it was a reminder of God being so true and wow. so present and so loving, and yeah. that you know the whole you know I've got you, yeah, up here you you can rely completely on me, yeah. And when I started going to church, it was a, it was a funny thing. Every Sunday, I would. I would sit be- beside a stranger, like whether I go there with uh, a connect member mm-hmm. who brought me, or whether I went there alone. On my right side, it's always a stranger. But every Sunday for a few months, the person on my right, wow, would, would hold me and be like, "What's your name?" 
and I feel prompted to pray for you. Wow. And you are one of those people who oh. was sitting on my right at that time. Wow. And who, who wanted to pray for me. You know? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe this is just the church culture. But it was happening week after week after week. And when I went home and reflected, it's just God saying that I am here for you and mm. I love you and this is how I am I'm showing my love for you, yeah. you know, to, to remind you that you have a community with you. That you're not and alone. So that you're not alone. And, that, and the, that bond that I felt, that relationship that I felt with God mm. just grew and that hunger grew, wow. right? And so through that, I decided to, you know, I'm going to get myself baptized mm -hmm. and I'm going to intentionally pursue God mm -hmm. and the amazing things he has wow. done, like testimony of the testimony. I will all I will never run out of testimonies. Oh man. Because the huge things that he's done in my life up till today for me to be able to do this today, yeah. right? It's it's a huge thing. You asked yeah. me three years ago whether this was possible, it wasn't. Yeah. So yes. Wow. God has so, been so so good to you. Absolutely. And I think the amazing part is that like although like like the enemy used people to hurt you and leave you and um you know like you were betrayed so much by people but but god still used people to show you his love for you and show you that he has not forgotten you yeah. and i'm sure that you know week after week as people were praying um for you like e even me it was because god has placed in our hearts to look to the left and be like hey look at this daughter of mine I love her so much. Here's her burden. Pray for her. You know, and it's just it's just so beautiful how you you thought that you were alone, mm. but God really like you can't physically see him, mm. but you can feel so much of like the extent of his love. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like on the outside, it would look like I'm alone. Like if I were to just try to mention like who's in my life and who's not, mm -hmm. you would feel like I'm alone. Yeah. But you know, in your, in, you know in your heart that that God is there and He was there and He was present throughout yeah. the, the ups and downs and there were so many downs. Yeah. And He was there and I was, well, it turned out that, you know, I was never... I was never alone, mm -hmm. although it felt like that yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, I I was never alone, yeah. and that that security and confidence that I had in who God was just mm -hmm. grew every single day, day by day, just grew. Yeah, it's just you know I can't I c I can't put into words how grateful mm -hmm. I've been for for the way He has orchestrated everything, yeah. for the unlikely people who have walked into my life yeah. and become like my closest friends who would sit and pray with me mm -hmm. and pray for me mm -hmm. and be there for me and every time there is a need right somehow or other God would answer that need no matter how small it was even yeah. if it's like oh Lord I ran out of this I need to find I need to find a way and how because I, I, I didn't have transportation you know yeah. like I, I had all of this issues mm -hmm. and somehow or other someone would just show up and like hey hey i felt like getting this for you i felt like and you know i don't wow. know how to put it in words but it's just like every need is actually met by god wow in a way that you you don't even imagine mm -hmm. in a way that you can't plan for yourself yeah and so that's been that's been incredible yeah it's really been incredible and it really shows how real god is because yeah. like he sees something like your heart's cry mm. he sees you telling him like god i really need this right now i can't go out to get this right mm. now i'm out of it and mm. then like he just puts in someone's heart like hey go get shanti this <laughs> and then that person just gets it for you and that's like that's so incredible because that really just shows that his heart is so much for you mm. and you know like for for i think for those who are out there and feeling like alone um I, I think like really remember that how much God loves you and how specific God is and how God actually wants to meet you where you're at and meet you in your needs. Mm -hmm. Like Shanti has experienced that like firsthand and like mm -hmm. we're sharing this so you can claim that testimony for yourself and yes. you can like, you know, like we, we are all like nothing very special here but we, we are all children of God, same mm -hmm. as you. And I would encourage you to really bring your needs to God and bring your desires to God and and really just trust him to meet them at like his perfect timing. Mm. Yeah. 
like Shanti, what, why don't you um, share with us some advice that you can encourage someone out there who is right now, you know, having a need that is unmet or having a desire that they're, they're really like trusting God for? Well, what I would say is that God knows your need better than you do. And God knows wow. your need even before you did. And say, because I will use my own personal example, right? So let's say at that time in my mind, what I needed was this problem to be removed. Then I would be okay. So that's what I understood in my mind, right? And that's what you start praying about. Mm -hmm. But actually, God understands your need, which is deeper than that. It's not that you needed your problem to be taken away. You needed your hope renewed. Wow. So for me, it was that. What was happening with me was that I had lost hope. Mm-hmm. I really lost hope at that time. So my, my fundamental need at that point was to get my hope renewed. Mm-hmm. And through the little things, did, my, did he take away my problems? He didn't, not, not right away, not like that. But in his own beautiful and amazing way that's so unique for each, each wow. of us, right? He met certain needs and he put certain reminders in my life that actually brought back the, that hope, mm. that hope in the hope in him actually you know the hope as why you need to wake up the next morning and the yeah. hope to just take the next step in your life to 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 live that hope to live like that was what was recovered for me and that wow. was actually the need that i didn't know i needed so for those out there who feel like god's not meeting your need mm-hmm. maybe you should look back and start reflecting what God has been doing in our life and sometimes wow. the need that He is meeting is the need that we don't even realize that we need it in the first place. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, that's so incredible. That like, yeah, I guess remember that God knows us better than we know ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I was actually recalled, uh, like reminded of this testimony that happened to you. Um, cause speaking of church community, right? And, and God like meeting your needs. Uh, I remember that you uh, the dance team prayed for you in church and you were in your wheelchair and you started walking during a prayer meeting um why don't you share us uh share with us about that um and then we will share more in the next episode so why don't you uh close us with that shanti all right oh that was incredible (laughs) that was actually because my conditions fluctuate right there's there's ups and downs and most days of the week I, i would use a wheelchair and then on certain days on shorter days of the week i would use my crutch so on that day it was one of one of the bad days where the Mm. pain was really high so i came to a church prayer meeting in my wheelchair in pain i was in the hospital that morning actually but i wanted to go to church so i went in pain and someone uh, prayed for me and the pray and the dance team was there as well and so they prayed for me and um it was very simple it was nothing it was nothing that I've never heard of. It was the simplest prayer I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. I said, why don't you try standing up? And I'm like, I can't. I would fall. I was like, okay, let's just try. Yeah. So I did. Right? I stood up and I'm like, all right, this feels okay. And this person says, why don't you take a step? So I did. So I took a couple of steps. I was very confused, right? Because I was in so much pain. Mm-hmm. I took a couple of steps and I could. And then... The, the worship team was on stage and they were they were rehearsing before the, the before the, the night actually started yeah. and so I turned around and I said I feel like I want to try to dance wow. <laughs> that just came out of nowhere so and then the person was like oh, alright then try and I did so I tried to move and I danced and I could and then I just broke down crying wow. I was on the floor just ugly crying <laughs> like from my eyes from my nose everywhere i was just crying because i used to be a dancer i used mm-hmm. to perform and i loved dancing like mm-hmm. like nothing else and for that couple of years i have i've been told that i'll never be able to do any of that again mm-hmm. like even walking was a struggle and i could dance on that night and i know that a few weeks before like on uh, on easter service I saw the dance team on stage with the worship team, right? And I remember saying it to the one person, and I'm like, I'm going to do that one day. Wow. And at that, that time, I was still quite, pre- I was still pretty thick, and I'm like, I'm going to do that one day. I just claimed it. Yeah. And just a couple of weeks later, 
a couple of weeks later, I was dancing wow. and I could worship freely because usually when I want to worship, mm-hmm. when I was on my wheelchair, I, I couldn't because I, I was seated, right? Yeah. I felt like I didn't feel free enough. And then when I was on my crutch, I had one hand needing to hold the crutch to make sure I was stable and I could only put one hand up. So it's mm-hmm. always there's so much limitation. I, yeah. I could never feel free as a worship. I really, my heart, yeah, I, my desire was to be able to worship freely. Mm-hmm. And that night was the first time in a long time that I could actually wow. feel like I could worship freely. Praise God. And then since then, it's been it's been a couple of months since I needed my wheelchair. Wow. So it's been, it's really been incredible. That's crazy. And the, the ability to be able to just, Lord, I just want to worship you freely. And to be able to do that wow. physically is, is just amazing. That's yeah. so amazing, Shanti. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Why don't we end um, with you praying for those who are listening. Mm. And yeah, you guys want to stay tuned for the next episode because this is when Shanti will tell you about her testimony in detail struggling with being differently able and finding hope from jesus in the midst of sickness in the midst of betrayal and darkness and you know our god is truly real and incredible so mm-hmm. yeah shanti please pray for those who are listening okay. thank you father thank you lord thank you for being here lord father thank you for being such a huge part of this message, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your realness, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we pray here today, Lord Father, that this sharing, Lord, will touch hearts mm. the way you intended it to be, Lord. Yeah. And that you will encounter our listeners out there individually, yeah. uniquely, the way that only you can do, Lord. That's right. We pray for softened hearts. We pray for veils to be removed. Amen. We pray for hearts to be opened, mm. to look at you and to experience the reality of you mm. in the midst of our lives, Lord Father. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Shanti. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Shanti. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys um, have like this podcast, please don't forget to like subscribe to us on youtube follow us on spotify um apple podcast google podcast don't forget to share this follow us on so- all our social media platforms and we love you guys so much thank you guys so much for supporting and we will see you guys on the next episode till next time bye That was so good. I really felt like the Holy Spirit was here and like speaking through us yes, and just like, absolutely. like in my head, I was just like, wow, this is going so smooth. I'm yes. not even like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, it's just flowing. It's just flowing. And I'm just like, it's the Holy Spirit. It has it to is. be the Holy Spirit because I'm just like, um, re- reminder of things to, to, to ask you to share. And then I'm just like, oh, it's just the Holy Spirit like downloading to me. And it's just, oh my gosh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Like people. Like before coming, I was praying also. I'm like, Holy Spirit, you'll go before us. Yeah. You lead the conversations. Yeah. And we'll just, I, was, I didn't prepare anything because I'm like, I'll just go away. You take us. Wow. So, so that good. was beautiful. That yeah. Was nice. I'm so excited so for the next so one. <laughs> <laughs>